anterior approach to the ankle. A brief video. Many thanks to the authors Stanley Hoppenfield, Pete G. DeBoer, and Richard Hutton. This video was created based on findings from the book cited below. Hoppenfeld, Stanley, Pete G. DeBoer, and Richard Hutton. Surgical Exposures in Orthopedics, The Anatomic Approach. Philadelphia, J.B. Lippincott Company, 1994. Indications. The anterior approach provides excellent exposure of the ankle joint for arthrodesis. The decision to use this approach rather than the lateral transfibular approach, the medial transmalleolar approach or the posterior approach depends on the condition of the skin and the surgical technique to be used. Its other uses include the following. Drainage of infections in the ankle joint. Removal of loose bodies. Open reduction and internal fixation of comminuted distal tibial fractures, pilon fractures. Place the patient supine on the operating table. Partially exsanguinate the foot either by elevating it for 3 to 5 minutes or by applying a soft rubber bandage loosely to the foot and binding it firmly to the calf. Then, inflate a thigh tourniquet. Partial exsanguination allows the neurovascular bundle to be identified because the venous structures will appear blue. Some continuous vascular oozing must be expected, however, figure landmarks. The medial malleolus is the bulbous, subcutaneous, distal end of the medial surface of the tibia. The lateral malleolus is the subcutaneous distal end of the fibula. Incision. Make a 15 cm longitudinal incision over the anterior aspect of the ankle joint. Begin about 10 cm proximal to the joint and extend the incision so that it crosses the joint about midway between the malleoli, ending on the dorsum of the foot. Take great care to cut only the skin, the anterior neurovascular bundle and branches of the superficial perineal nerve cross the ankle joint remarkably close to the line of the skin incision, figure. Alternatively, make a 15 cm longitudinal incision with its center overlying the anterior aspect of the medial malleolus, see figure, internervous plane. Although the approach uses no true internervous plane, the extensor hallucis longus and extensor digitorum longus muscles define a clear intermuscular plane. Both muscles are supplied by the deep perineal nerve, but the plane may be used because both receive their nerve supplies well proximal to the level of the dissection. The plane must be used with great caution, however, because it contains the neurovascular bundle distal to the ankle. See figures. Superficial surgical dissection. Incise the deep fascia of the leg in line with the skin incision, cutting through the extensor retinaculum. See figure. Find the plane between the extensor hallucis longus and extensor digitorum longus muscles a few centimeters above the ankle joint and identify the neurovascular bundle, the anterior tibial artery and the deep perineal nerve, just medial to the tendon of the extensor hallucis longus, see figures. Deep surgical dissection. Trace the bundle distally until it crosses the front of the ankle joint behind the tendon of the extensor hallucis longus. Retract the tendon of the extensor hallucis longus medially, together with the neurovascular bundle. Retract the tendon of the extensor digitorum longus laterally. The tendons become mobile after the retinaculum has been cut, but the neurovascular bundle adheres to the underlying tissues and requires mobilization. See figures. Alternatively, in pillion fractures, incise the deep fascia to the medial side of the tibialis anterior tendon. See figures, and expose the underlying surface of the tibia together with the anterior medial ankle joint capsule. For arthrodesis surgery, incise the remaining soft tissues longitudinally to expose the anterior surface of the distal tibia. Continue incising down to the ankle joint, then cut through its anterior capsule. Expose the full width of the ankle joint by detaching the anterior ankle capsule from the tibia or the talus by sharp dissection. See figures. Some periosteal stripping of the distal tibia may be required. Although the periosteal layer usually is thick and easy to define, the plane may be obliterated in cases of infection, the periosteum then must be detached piecemeal by sharp dissection. If the approach is used in fracture surgery, take great care to preserve as many soft tissue attachments to the bone as possible. Meticulous preoperative planning will allow smaller precise incisions with the consequent reduction in soft tissue damage. Dangers. 
nerves. Cutaneous branches of the superficial perineal nerve run close to the line of the skin incision just under the skin. Take care not to cut them during incision of the skin. See figure. Dangers. Nerves. The deep perineal nerve and anterior tibial artery, the anterior neurovascular bundle, must be identified and preserved during superficial surgical dissection. They are in greatest danger during the skin incision because they are superficial and run close to the incision itself. See figure. Dangers. Above the ankle joint, the neurovascular bundle lies between the tendons of the extensor hallucis longus and tibialis anterior muscles at the joint, the tendon of the extensor hallucis longus crosses the bundle. The plane between the tibialis anterior and the extensor hallucis longus can be used as long as the neurovascular bundle is identified and mobilized so as to preserve it. See figure. How to enlarge the approach. Extensile measures. Although this approach does not descend through an internervous plane, on occasion it can be extended proximally to expose the structures in the anterior compartment. To expose the proximal tibia, use the plane between the tibia and the tibialis anterior muscle. Distal extension to the dorsum of the foot is possible, but rarely, if ever, required. Thanks for watching my video. Do not forget to subscribe to my non-profit channel.